Hello, Keith here with Math Fun and Games. So we're playing MBT by GMT Games. I'm doing Scenario 2. I'm using the, all the basic rules and some advanced rules. If you click in the link below, you can get a copy of the rules that I'm using. I highlighted the rules that I'm using in the table of contents. I believe the blue rules are rules that you've seen me use in other games. The green rules are the rules that I'm using for the first time in this scenario. So we're on turn three. So I'm using all the units that come with the scenario except for the anti-tank guided missiles. Because the anti-tank guided missiles are specific to MBT and I want to focus on rules that can be used with both the Panzer series of games and the MBT series of games. Because they're the same system but MBT adds on more complexity because Armored Warfare was more complex in the 80s. So, okay. And one thing you'll notice that a lot of these ranges are very long over here. So that really affects things in this, in this game. You don't see many shots at extreme long range or long range. Most of the shots are going to be at point blank to medium range. Just because the, that's the way the game system is. Now, if you were to do Panzer, you would see more shots at longer ranges because the guns weren't as powerful and the technology wasn't as powerful. Okay. So you're going to see higher penetration factors in this game compared to Panzer, and you're going to see higher armor factors compared to Panzer. And this game also adds things like anti-tank guide missiles, helicopters, jets, uh, reactive armor, and th different things like that. Okay, so... Let's start with the spotting phase. Who is spotted and who is not? I want to go from left to right. So this unit right here, not spotted. Yes, definitely not spotted. So I can remove the spot marker. Boom. Okay, good. How about this unit? Spotted? Yes, they are spotted. So I can leave the spot marker. Not spotted, not spotted, not spotted. So all of these I can remove the spot marker. Spot move, remove it. Spot move, remove it. So if a unit, so you can turn spotting off and on. See the spot? There's a spot that means it's <laughs> potentially spotted. And as I go through these, I just turn off the spotting markers uh, for those who aren't spotted. This unit right here is definitely spotted. These three units are spotted. This unit and this unit are spotted. I don't believe those units to the left are spotted, so I think I can remove those spotting markers. All right, so all those units back there are not going to be spotted. So I can take all of these and remove the spot move markers. And I can remove the spot move markers from this stack. Excellent. All right. So I'm going left to right. So those units on top of the hill right there. They're not going to be spotted because you see the plateau effect between that hex right there and then you have level three trees. So I can remove the spot marker from them. How about those units? Those units have actually fired, which means they probably had a target last turn, which means that target can probably still see them, but I'm not for sure. So let's check it out. Uh, okay, so they'd be blocked by trees blocked by trees. This unit right here will be blocked by level 4 trees. So this unit right here oh, I gotta turn that off. I gotta go back. I'm gonna do this. So, oops. No flying tank. All right. <laughs> so this unit right here you see how it crosses that hex right there? It crosses a woods hex. 
that particular wood sex that dark color is well, let's go closer they might be able to see each other huh. nope i think pretty sure across is that dark green wood sex let's zoom in and it's very very close but i'm pretty sure it crosses that I'm not so sure that's that is a really close call and I can't zoom in any further it looks like it barely cuts through that hex so I'm gonna say that is blocked the last site is blocked man that's close but I'm pretty sure that if you were to magnify that that would be close so not spotted by them and all these units down here are blocked by the trees oh there's it, they'd be blocked by one oh, because that's three level three okay so those units on top of the hill are no longer spotted okay because the unit that had spotted them moved so move the spot fire okay these units over here in this particular are blocked by them and I don't see any other hex that can see them, so I don't think they're spotted. Well, no, they're spotted. <laughs> okay, so they're spotted. This unit right here, of course, is spotted by... Is it spotted? That stack, how about there? Not spotted. So those units right there are not spotted. Interesting. So they're spotted. They're not spotted. Unless I can get a spot from that direction. Let's see if you can spot anybody. Yep, yeah, they are spotted. All of those are spotted. And he is not spotted because he goes over it. It's not consecutive hex sides. So and he is he spotted by anybody else? Let's find out. Let's see. All right, no, well, consecutive, yeah, he is spotted. The reason is this hex creates a blind spot of two hex hides, just because of, I remember from previous games. So th that creates a blind spot of two hex hides, so he is spotted by them. Do I want to pull my chart out? No, let me check it. What's the range? Let's check the range from there to there. Oh. See, normally I'd use, I have to print a physical copy of my chart that I use. All right, so that hex side, how far away is it? It's range of nine. And I believe it's a level difference of two heights. One, two, three, yeah. It's two heights difference, level nine. I think it divides it by eight, maybe. But anyways, that has a I know that has a spotting value of two hex sides. So and that's three away. So that unit is spotted. Okay, let's go left to right. All those are spotted. Let's go up. All those units are spotted. How about the two units in the back? Those units right there might be spotted. Let's find out if they're spotted. Let me check. And not spotted by them. Spotted by him. Let's go closer. Yeah, uh, spotted by him. Both of those. Okay, so they are spotted. So that's the spotting phase. Now we do the command phase. Oops, boom. Oh, and of course, over here in the corner, these two units, I don't think they're spotted, but let's check those and see if we have a spot on them. Okay. Let's check. 
check to see if we have a spot on them. I don't think we do. Let's check. How about him? Down here. Nope. No spots. Absolutely not. And on the hill, you're going to have these level threes, which are going to block. See, it's going to go through these level threes. And they're lower than level three. Okay, so that's it. So those are two units are not spotted, and I can remove the spotting markers from them. Remove the spots from them. Whoever created these, this mod, uh, want to thank Stigler for, I think his name is Rob Doan. Yeah, and I want to thank him for creating this module because it did some really cool things like this whole spotting mechanic when he created this module. module so it's you did a good job with it all right so that's the spotting now let's look at the that's the spotting phase so now we're going to go to the command phase so how many commands does the do the americans have so they have how many vehicles there two four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen 60, 17. So the Americans have 18 vehicles. I think we already established that 18 vehicles. I love charts. I really, no, seriously, I, I love charts. It's really cool. Charts are cool. Okay, so 11. So the Americans have 11 units. And how many forces do the force attack have? One, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So far, I'm seeing twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So both the Warsaw Pact forces and NATO forces have eighteen. I mean, 11 commands each. So I'm going to place the NATO, I mean, Warsaw Pact Forces commands first. This is a big step. Let's, let's go down and see what we got here. So this unit obviously isn't going to fire. Do I want to put them in Overwatch? No, because I want to unload that heavy machine gun. So they're going to give him a move command. I'm going to give this vehicle, these guys, um, these two are going to be giving them, well, they have, you know, I don't want them to have much joint command. So move, how about them? Mm. I'm going to give them a joint command, move. These guys back here. Well, there's two units actually here. There's the vehicle. No, no, the vehicle was, was already eliminated. They bailed. So I only have them. They're going to move, but I want to check suppress if they're suppressed, if they can move. I think they can. I want to move here. I want to remove that spot from the... There we go. From the vehicle that's been bailed out on. Fix that pile up a little bit. Okay, there we go. So the crew that it's probably hiding in the woods over here, or maybe there, I don't know. One in the city of fire. I don't know. Okay, so we use one, two, three, four, five. We have six commands left. this unit oh shoot okay this is where overwatch commands come into handy because i know there's going to be movement toward this town and i want to watch that bridge however he has a shot right now at them but i'm going to give him an 
overwatch command because I want to fire at him during the movement phase. So we're going to get an overwatch command. And the two units behind it. I'm going to give them a shoot. I'm going to give them a move command. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so every stack can get one now. So he's going to have a fire command. It's going to be a difficult shot, but. And this whole group right here. They're spotted. I'm going to give them a fire command. No, I'm going to give them a short halt command. So I'm going to give that group a short halt. This group is going to get a move command. And that unit on the hill, I'm also going to give it a move command. Okay, so that's it for the Soviets or Warsaw Pact commands. Now I have 11 commands for the Americans. Unfortunately, with these units right here, I would need to use two commands to give all of them a fire command. So I'm going to give a fire command to two of them. I'm going to give a short halt to another one of them. And I don't want to, I don't want to snap. So I want to give that unit right there with the fire command. There, okay. Those units, I want to give a move command. So both of those stacks, move commands move commands so how many commands do i have out right now i have one two only four so i have seven commands left i'm going to give him a fire command give this guy a move command okay so one two three four five one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, so I have five more commands. Now things get interesting. Take a look and see what they can fire at. So they can fire. I'm going to give them, you know what? I'm going to give them Overwatch. So they're getting Overwatch. Let's see. So how many commands I have left? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have four commands left. One, two, three, seven. Yeah, I have four commands left for that group on the right. Let me zoom in. Boom, boom. Right. Let's go over there. All right, so these units are on the right. Now things get interesting. I have four commands, and I have, so this is the way I'm going to separate the commands. The first unit's going to get a short halt. These three units right here are going to get a move. This unit's going to get its own move. How about that tank? I'm going to give that a move command. All right. So I think that's it for the command phase. Let me pull back. I just want to double, triple check the American forces. One, two, 
3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yep, 11 for the American. So the number of commands is right. Zoom in and let's take a look at the field. Okay, so now we have the, now that we're done, we have the initiative phase. I'm going to roll the NATO's initiative first. They get 38. And I'm going to roll the Warsaw Pact. They get 63. So the Russian forces perform their fire first. And there's only one Russian unit, I believe, with a fire command, and that's him. So who can he fire against? I think he has a target over there on the left. If I'm not mistaken. Yep, right there. So that's a range of what? Range 12, any modifiers? No modifier, except there is a plus one for the vehicle size. So I said range of 12. And 12 is, no, that's not the vehicle I'm using. That's the vehicle I'm using. <laughs> so 12 is short range. It'll be a short range plus one. And the penetration factor is a 97. Short range plus one, penetration factor is 97. So 77 to hit, and that's a 42. So hit location, shots coming in from the front. The hit location was a four. So it's going to be a turret side hit. So a turret side harm, turret side armor on the m60 a3 turret side from the, from the front how do you get a turret side i don't think you can get a turret side from let's take a look go back oh it's front angle okay so it's turret front so a turret front hit and the armor level so it's 100 so it basically bounces off no effect Ooh, okay well oh no no that's the m1 <laughs> we don't have an m1 here okay too bad it wasn't an m1 oh yeah they have turret front 48 oh, paper thin armor on these guys okay so that's a hit so what type of hit do we get we get a number two hit Let's look under the firing vehicle, Soviets, number two, and it's a damaged. So it's going to have a damaged turret. So that means this vehicle right here is going to have problems firing. It's going to have a modifier to its firing. So I go over here, damaged, and then I have to make sure this is on the turret side. Change damage type up. And the turret is damaged, and I have to do a bailout check for the crew. Check the bailout. I believe it's on this table. Do, 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 do. I'm going to go back. Let's go to chart A. No, it's on this one, actually. Insight suppression bailout. There you go. So it's damaged, and it's the crew, so they only have 30 or less. Transporting units automatically bail out if vehicle bails out. Okay, so you roll to see if they bail out, and they do not bail out. They stand fast. Okay. So I can remove that fire marker, fire command, and I replace that spot with a fire spot. That's that. So that's the fire phase for the Soviets. Now the fire phase for the NATO forces, which is going to be this guy firing right back at this guy. So he's going to go to hull side. So let me uh, go from here to here. Range of twelve. Range 12 is going to be short range. Yeah, it is short range. 
96 to hit. Short range, 96 to hit. No modifiers. I believe that's going to be a 70 to hit. Oops. And it is a 70 to hit. Roll it. A 68, so it barely hits, but it does hit. So it was the front side, number six. So it's a hull front. That stare means if it was hull down, it would have bounced off. But it's hull front. So now we check the hull front armor. So it's going to be 96 is the penetration factor. And the hull front. Front side, hull front is 93. So it hits, it penetrates, and it's going to be an 8. So the effect is going to be 8, and I believe that's going to be a brew up. Yep, a brew up. All right. Now I'm not using fancy, all the other different armor types right here, but ammo types, because I don't want to complicate things. I'm also not using, I just want you to know, be aware of their existence. I'm also not using all these on the left. You have different types of armor, reactive armors, and I'm not using those just yet. So that can change things significantly. Also look, level rise or fall. If your vehicles are at the same level, you use this. If you're firing up, you use this. And if you have a falling shot against this vehicle, you use that. Simple. All right, so this guy gets brewed up. I can remove the spotting marker too. Remove the spot, fire, and brew it up. Boom. Okay, so this right here, I can remove the fire marker. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Damage turret. Oh, poop. I didn't do damage turret factor. 71, 2, 3, 49. I think that's a hit anyways. What did I get the hit with? I got an 8. I got the 38, I believe. Did I, or did I get the 58? Or the 68? No, the 68 was the... The 68... Where does it go up? All right, you know what? That was a good example of combat. And I remember what I hit with. So it's a hull hit, so it was the 68. So look over here, right? Front side six, so it was a hull front hit. And I remember saying, yeah, that's gonna, that's gonna miss, right? So that right there, because I remember saying about the hull down thing. All right, so 68 actually would have been, and then eight for brew up, yeah. So this right here, this fired, but it missed. And the reason it missed, it had it added that damage turret. All right, the damage turret changed it from a 70 to hit all the way down to a 49 to hit. So that misses, and this guy gets a second lease on life. I'm afraid this is going to delete my whole tank. <laughs> I don't want to delete my whole tank. I just want to delete the brew-up marker. There we go. And delete. And again, I have to mark this fire. Damage. Oh, spot fire. There we go. And this guy right here has to be spot fired. Vehicle. And already has a spot fired. Okay, so that's the first, oops, the first fire for the Americans. Now the next fire for the Americans is going to be these two vehicle, these two vehicles right there. Be those two, all right? And they're gonna fire at that unit right there, and it's gonna be six to short range, 
So the I mean point blank. So they're both at point blank range, and the only modifier is a minus one for light cover because of the light woods. Light woods modifier light. Okay. So minus one modifier, point blank range. 81. Two shots to get 81. One hit with the 0, 3. One hit with the 48. So the 0, 3, 0 becomes a 10, automatically becomes a track hit. So that becomes a track hit. And you have to check for bailout on a track hit. So that die roll right there, well, that's actually the bailout die roll, and they do not bail out. All right, now I have to roll again. 19 is a hit. I believe that's a turret front hit. Let's take a look. A 1. Now, if that was a, a falling shot, shot, that'd be a deck hit. But it's not. It's just a front hit. It's a turret front. So turret front, how's it how's it's facing? Let's zoom in. Okay, so it appears to be facing. Yep. Yeah. So that's it's gonna be turret front. Yeah, either way it's gonna be turret front. So let's take a look and it's front side facing. Here we go. Okay, so it's going to front side. Turret front, wow, 105. But it was a point blank range. But turret front, 105. Okay, uh, how much penetration? Oh, 110, so I still get penetration on it. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, good thing it was at point blank range, huh? All right, what's the effect of that going to be? What I roll? So a nine, oh, that's going to be a brew up. Boom. And that complicates things for the Soviets tremendously. So for that type of armor, nine, brew up. Alrighty. So I can get rid of that Overwatch and get rid of the track. That becomes a brew up. Damage. Boom. All right. Now, if, if a track brews up, do they have a chance to bail out? I don't think they do. But just for curiosity's sake, let's look at the bailout. See if you can bail out from a vehicle that's brewed out. Nope. Oh, yeah, you can. Uh, what is that? Mean? 61. Has to be greater than 61. Oh, okay. It's legged and towed. So that's just for the passengers okay so if it's knocked out or brewed up the crew, crew is gone but you have, then you have to check the leg units of the passengers to see if they all right so that removes this fire marker and now we can mark both of those with the spot fire oh, all right now one second we'll have a spot fire too okay there we go so i believe that's it for the fire phase because i don't believe we have anybody else Oh no, we have some people at short halt. Okay. Yeah, we have quite a few people at short halt here. It's 320. I go about shovel pretty soon. All right. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to go back and do the short halts. Halts. I'm going to start with the Warsaw Pact forces. So this unit has a target to what? And the only one they would have had, but take, uh, it's close, huh? Let's take a look. No, that, that's cut by that. Yeah. So they don't have line of sight. Cool. All right. So I'm going to be able to flip that to the move side. 
don't think they had any other targets. That was the only target they had. I don't think they had any other targets. How about over here? Oh, they do have a shot against them, don't they? All right, short halt against short halt. Cool. So we have three shots. Range 11, which is short range. Target is moving. It's going to be really tough to hit, though. So that's short range. It's stabilization factor because of the short halt. It's going to be three, so it's going to be minus three. I'm just going to go and use the chart. So the the only factor is it's going to be a falling shot, actually. And if I go over here, I'm going to go up. Oh, oh, oh. Short range, minus three for the stabilization. In fact, that's firing from moving, minus two from the target, move from the target being moving, and there are no other modifiers. So it's going to be a 35 to hit. They have three chances to get a 35. Miss, miss, and miss. So they get three three chances. So that's their, that's their fire. I flip it over to the move side. Now, right back at you. And there's these guys against them. Oh, I had a plus one, too. Wait a minute. Uh, what is it? So I, got, I want to see what the target size of this unit is, because that's not the M60. It's a different vehicle. It's an M113. No, they're going to have, if anything, the M113 is going to have a smaller size. M113 will have a very small profile. Oh, yeah, minus one. Okay, so that would have been minus six, so it's even less chance of hitting. So now we go in the other direction. That's going to be now interesting enough. That's going to be an extreme range, but there's no stabiliz zero. What does that mean? Does that mean it has no stabilization penalty? Or does that mean that I can't fire as when I'm moving? Okay, we got to take a look at the rule here. Okay, so that's actually a minus four. The zero means they're non-stabilized, so you can still fire. It's just very, has a minus four modifier. So minus four with a moving target. So it's going to be minus six. So it's going to be, and the range is going to be at extreme range too. So that's going to be a fat chance of hitting. And even if it hits, probably going to bounce off. All right, so 11... And it's just using a heavy machine gun. So it's going to be extreme range. And it's going to be minus six. I need a four. <laughs> oh, yeah. 80, so it, no effect. All right. But what that means is I now flip that. I did have a short halt marker there. I know I had a short halt marker there. Flip that to its move side, indicating that it's going to move next. And we have two more vehicles. So there's very little chance of that hitting now. These two right, this vehicle right here is firing at a short halt. I don't think it has a target. This would have been its only target, so it doesn't have a target. Uh, one possible target, maybe. No, no target. So this, so that short halt marker, it's flipped to its move side. Any other fires? Okay, we just have units in Overwatch now. Okay, so that's it for the move. No, that's it for the fire phase. We're going to head into the move phase now okay so soviets fired first so nato moves first just do the no-brainers to begin with these units right here all right we're gonna go down the hill one two three four five one two 
three, four, five. What I like is I noticed that the, the move spot marker automatically turned on for me. What a nice little feature, eh? See? Move spot. Move spot. Okay. That's one unit for movement. Gonna go to the left for movement. Just these two. They can move what? They can move five. One. Two. Three. And they go like that. Yep. I want to cover that angle. There we got their spot all right those are an overwatch you gotta be careful i don't think they're nope the soviets don't have anybody in overwatch unless they have somebody in overwatch in the village which they don't okay so move so if i want to use some movement right i'm going to be able to move three which i'm going to because i don't say soviets so i'm going to Turn this way. Well, 11, I can move 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Move command. This unit, now things get interesting. If I want to use the road, I can move how many? I can move 13. So I can go 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to four. Next question. No. Oops. So I won't actually be able to unload them. That's the problem. I won't be able to load them that because you need to have your movement rate. So they're still going to have to stay aboard there, which kind of, that's risky. All right, how about these guys? Let's go over here. So I have this unit right. So the, these guys just had to move. So I can move how many hexes? My real movement rate is 8. It's 13. So I can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then I can unload them which I am going to do. Yes, what do I got there? So there are two units. So they're both going to move. They're going to unload. And we're about to have a wild time in this town tonight. I can have these guys facing the way I want and facing this way. And of course, you know how everybody is automatically marked. Move mark. Excellent. Meanwhile, this unit right here is going to turn, free turn. One, two, oops. Three. I don't think there's a cost for boarding. Is there an extra cost for crossing the floor? Last one. That cost this cost two. So three, four. And return. There we go. We'll stop right there. That should help me turn. Oh, wait. I'm going to spend one point to turn it in this direction. Because I want to cover this angle. Left move. So all these units have to move together as one. Well, they have to end within one hex of each other. Let's go right there. So one, two, three, four, five, six. 
six. Yeah, that's good for me. And just gonna pull up there. And he's gonna pull up there. Alrighty, that's it for the American movement for. Now we have the Soviet movement phase. Hmm. And there. They're going to move there. This unit. They're going to unload. So they're going to unload that heavy machine gun team. It's going to be a hot little town tonight. These units have what moving cross country? They have seven. One, two, three, and we're going to stop right there. Three. Four, six, seven. Eh. <laughs> I'm so confused. All right. Anyways, so we move there. We move there. We all I just wanted to get that one flat. Now that I want to place them, I'm gonna move these over. There we go. Well, so that's it for them. These units are going to... Now things get a little bit more complex. First of all, this unit is suppressed. How does that affect movement? Well, after movement speed, rounded down. So let's move them over here. And the, let's look up the leg chart. Now they are what? I think they're... So they're motorized rifles. So let's go into this chart and let's look at Soviet leg units. And they're a squad, a motor rifle squad. So their movement is two, three with over with a over match. So they only kill only with one. One boy. And then they're going to do something called full cover, which you'll we'll see in a moment. All right, so they moved. Who next? Who next? Who next? So these units right here, they have a move command now. Remember, I have Overwatch. I'm going to have to take a break because I have to do some shoveling. So we have unit over here in Overwatch. So I have units here that are moving. And units here that are moving, but can only move three. They have only have a moving point of three. So they're just, they're easy. They're going to go just down the hill because they're at short halt. So they can't move very far. So it's going to be one, two, and then they're going to stop. So they're easy. That's easy. Okay. 
and this unit up here on the hill is kind of easy because they're going to head down the hill. All right, seven, so it's going to be one, two, three, four. How many are there? Five, six. And they, they'd actually be able to move forward one. One, two, three, four. There you go, five, six. And he can actually move and turn. So he's got move, turn right here. Right. The turn there, move seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, my overwatch, do my overwatch, any of my overwatching units have a chance to hit them? Let's see. I think this one might have the best chance to have a line of sight to them. Okay, so it goes right along that woods hex side, so it is blocked. Okay, so that takes care of those units. These units right here have a full, have their full move. They can move seven. Okay. So let's move them. Oops, I want to move them all. It's a group. So they're going into the rocks. That's half so armored unit in rocks. Armored unit in rough. Four. So that's four movement points. And they might be vulnerable to that Overwatch fire. I don't think they are right there. No, they're not. Four. Five, six, four, five, six, stop right there, Overwatch fire. All right, so let's check the range. Oh, I don't want to move them. Oh. Okay, let's do that. All right, let's go down. Tough shot. 19, range of 19. Let's go over to the M683. 19 is going to be medium range. So let's see the modifiers. Medium range, moving target. So target size minus 2. Target is not in cover. Is the target in cover? I don't think there's any cover there. I think they're in clear terrain. Yep. Minus two. So suppress overwatch. Minus one. Okay. So it's gonna be overwatch. So it's just gonna be medium range, minus one. I have two shots, they both need a 45 to hit. Zero, so that is a track hit on one vehicle. And the second shot's a miss. So you got track hit on one of the vehicles. I'm going to take the vehicle at the bottom. I'm going to mark it with a track hit. And I'll check for bailout. Boom. And then these units are going to move forward another hex. Now I have to check out for bailout. 30 or less. Okay. So there is a, there's a bit, again, there's a bailout chart. And if a vehicle gets a hit, gets hit, you use the bailout chart right here to the left. Right? And all you do is you look at you look at the type of hit. So you look at track hit and it's crew, so you need a 30 or less. Alright, and if it's a plus, you'll need that number or above. That's it. Okay, so those two units over have did their overwatch fire. I just want to, they're already marked with that fire marker. And I believe that's it for, and these guys are all marked for movement. And this vehicle right here, I want to take a look. It's not supposed to be marked for movement. Track it. Oh, wait. It, yeah, for purposes of spotting. It was moving, so I can't have it moving because it's just a track hit. It basically can't move anymore. All right.
Uh, last but not least, I believe I have one more unit to move. Yeah, well, I have two more units to move these two. Let's, see, let's move one at a time. Now they have to be within one hex of each other. So they're going to go forward to there, and this unit's going to go forward into there and turn to the left, and they're marked as moved. All right. Clean things up a bit, and we're done. So now we move from marker face. Now this unit right here, I'm going to zoom in. This unit right here, they lose their suppression. This says suppression off, so they're no longer suppressed. Now they want to go, they can go into something called full cover. All right, so they're going to go into full cover mode. So I need a full cover marker. Let's see what marker that is. I don't think it's a game, it's a unit marker. What unit marker is it? Let's find out. Let's find the unit marker that we're using here. There you go, full cover. So I'll take the full cover marker. Now that makes them very difficult to spot. It also makes them difficult to spot and makes it difficult for them to spot other units. And I believe it also gives a huge advantage if they're fired upon. Right. So I believe that's it for this turn. All right, we're going to be going to turn four. We're going to see a lot of exciting things going on over here. A good learning opportunity because we're going to have a little scuffle in this town over here. All right, so things are going to get interesting next turn. Now, I don't think I can do close combat. I think you have to enter the hex to do close combat. So let's see. Yeah, I'm pretty sure overrun. You have to enter the hex to do overrun. Close assault, you would have to enter the hex. Let's just check hand to hand. Okay. No, you have to be adjacent to a target to initiate the attack. So passenger leg units may dismount and then immediately enter hand-to-hand -hand combat with an adjacent unit. This is called a dismount attack. They may not combine their attack with any other units in the hex. And that's a dismount attack. And you can move one hex. Spend one of their movement or spear allowance to move adjacent to a target. So they could do an advancing attack, but however... They dismounted, so I don't think they can do anything right now. And same here. Okay, so we're good. We're going to have some interesting things going on next turn. Thank you very much, and you have a good day. Bye-bye.